Okay. By now, most of you know that I will be out of work for another three weeks. To make my life more fun, my septic tank overflowed. 250 bucks to pump. To warm up, I took a walk around the neighborhood. I'll be honest, 75% of my neighbors are assholes, but the few I like, I'll stop and talk to. I was telling my friend Brian about my septic tank problems and learned that he had worked in the septic field for 11 years. This is not your tank. I'll bet you six beers that your filter is clogged. I didn't know that septic tanks had filters, but they do. Brian explained what I needed to do and then spent 20 minutes telling me what he was finding in septic systems. One job that particularly stood out was where he removed the lid to check the filter and discovered that it was filled with almost 30 condoms. He said he joked a little about how maybe the owner should throw them in the trash from now on when he suddenly noticed how pale the guy was. It looked like they had never used a condom in their 18 years of marriage. And how did it all turn out? Damn, I don't know. I cleaned the filter, and he wrote me a check. However, when I left, he was wearing a pair of kitchen gloves, and he was putting all the rubber bands in a small bucket. And we left. Well, isn't this wonderful, I thought, looking down. Beth ran into the living room screaming, saying the toilet had exploded. Apparently, this was the case. Knowing full well that Beth wouldn't do it, I cleaned up the bathroom, then went outside to check the drain plug. As soon as I opened it, a flood came out, and I had to go take a shower. It was a Saturday afternoon, and I was wondering how expensive an emergency call would be when Beth walked past me, suitcase in hand. I'm going to live with my sister until you fix this. Call me when you're done with this. I went back inside and undressed right at the back door. To hell with all this, I'm going to take a shower. Water may simply be running through your backyard. While the water washed over me, I thought about my life. Married 18 years, one daughter 17, works as a summer camp counselor, saving every cent for college. I thought about Beth and the growing distance between us. It seems that I was even more ignorant and clumsy now than when we first got married. But sex is a thing of the past. She was only 41 years old and still pretty. Maybe it was a woman's thing. I read about early menopause when I was at the doctor's office last month. Maybe that's how it was. Regardless, her attitude was starting to rub off on Amy, and the pain on her face when her mother left was more than I was prepared to bear. We were going to talk when she got home. I had reached my limit, and honestly, if she didn't like it, I didn't give a fuck. I'm tired of living in a toxic environment. After cleaning up, I decided to go to the pub, eat one of these wonderful burgers, and maybe have a couple of beers. And I would make sure that if I needed to go to the toilet, I would do it there. I was walking out and saw Gus picking up his evening paper. The light came on. Gus used to have a wastewater treatment service. He would still have connections and maybe he could invite someone. I stopped and we chatted nonstop for a few minutes before I got to my question. He laughed. Do you want to save $250? Damn right. I would do that. How? I bet the tank isn't full. I think your filter is clogged. All you have to do is clean it. I'll tell you what. I'll come by tomorrow after church and show you how to fix it. I was so happy that I invited him and his wife to the pub. They spent the next two hours talking about the strange things they had pulled out of the sumps. I think his wife Mabel was a dispatcher, where he worked and would sometimes give him rides if nothing was going on. One woman lost her wedding ring and paid to have the entire tank filtered to find it, only to find it behind a plant on her counter. Another guy followed them into the dump, apparently he thought he was about to get caught, and flushed... $80,000 worth of dope down the toilet. They did find Datura, and he got a nice long prison sentence. The next day they were with me at half past one. We found the lid and pulled it. There was a filter there, clear as day. Gus told me to keep an eye on the hose as he pulled it. He started grinning about when he was halfway up. His wife looked down and giggled. I found your problem, Chad. You might want to throw it in the trash from now on. I looked at what he was holding in his hands. My filter was clogged with condoms. Twenty-three, as I found out later. I was dumbly wondering how a pack of condoms managed to get into my septic system. Then it dawned on me exactly how. 
Something must have shown on my face because Gus and Mabel fell silent for a minute. I'm sure there's an explanation for this, Chad. Maybe you've had guests recently, or maybe Amy had some friends when you weren't there. Really, Mabel? Do you think I'll entertain guests long enough for them to do this that many times? Or that my 17-year-old daughter is suddenly having orgies? No, there is only one explanation. They spent another 45 minutes persuading me before leaving. I waited for them to leave, took out some thick rubber gardening gloves, and carefully collected the condoms, placed them in a three-layer bag, then in a plastic container, and placed it in a small freezer on top of my store refrigerator. Then I went into the house to think, fucking bitch, much has fallen into place. We're done. No negotiations, no apologies. Ended marriage. Only one thing kept me from pulling the trigger. I wanted to know who it was. I didn't bother calling Beth. Let her stay where she was for a while. I needed to make a plan. I spent the rest of the day in my store. Amy had to be picked up the next day, and I had already taken a day off for that. It was the first time I had seen her in seven weeks. She gave me a big hug and told me about some of the adventures she had had arguing with 11-year-old girls who thought they were 20. Really so young? Damn, am I really getting old? Only when we were almost home did she ask about her mother. I told her about the septic tank. So it's already fixed? Yes, it has already been fixed. Does mom know? No, I tried to call last night and this morning. Remember, she should have been with me when I took you. We planned a full day of family activities. Amy took out her phone and called her aunt. Is mom there? No, honey, your mom is at work. Fine, then why did everyone say she wasn't there when I called? Pills, pills, pills. That's the problem. Mom better call me back from her office phone, not from her cell phone, in the next 20 minutes. If not, I'll ask Dad to take me to check. And if she turned her own daughter off because of some stupid business, this little bird is going to sing to her father. I know something. 20 minutes. 30 minutes later, she called, out of breath. Hello, honey. I'm so glad you're home. Yes, I realized this when you went out to meet the bus. Something happened to me. I can just bet. Goodbye, Mom. She called me ranting about how disrespectful she was. Well, look who taught her. This will happen tomorrow before the tank is pumped out. Amy will be at my parents' house tonight if you're interested. I won't. I hung up and looked at Amy. She sighed. So you found out about it. What are you going to do? And before you get mad at me for not telling you, I found out about this at summer camp. Jenny, my best friend, had a cousin named Tony who has a boyfriend, Jack, who lives three doors down from us. He told Tony what he saw, who told Jenny, and Jenny told me. Well, then this is straight from the horse's mouth. This must be the gospel. Sarcasm doesn't suit you, at least in relation to your daughter. I was going to talk about this tonight. What are we going to do? You're going to graduate from high school, have a senior prom. You will most likely end up in a single-parent household. No matter how old you are, the judge will probably let you choose who you want to live with. I will respect your decision if this is your mom. Just tell me you won't cut me out of your life. What do you think? I think you're a pretty ignorant guy most of the time. Of course I will choose you. I could never manipulate her the way I can manipulate you. She spent so little time with us, even in the same house, that I bet she couldn't pick me out from the crowd. But what I really need to do right now is get rid of the taste of camp food in my mouth. I would kill for a decent pizza or a good burger. So if you want to get to the heart of your only child, do it through my stomach. I took her to a local pizzeria and watched as she destroyed three quarters of a large meat lover's pizza with extra cheese. She sat back in her chair, burped, and asked me what I was going to do with her mother. She acted mature and tough, but I saw the little girl in her eyes. It must have been hard for us. I took her hand. Let me tell you, Andy, what my priorities are. First, I have to be absolutely sure that I'm handling this correctly. In the coming months, I need to figure out how to minimize the impact of divorce on you. Right now, you are the number one person in my life. I want you to be as safe and happy as I can make you. A lot depends on how your mother reacts. I promise you that I will do everything possible so that you do not end up in the center of events. But, Pumpkin, if what I suspect is true, my marriage to your mother is over.
It was a surreal conversation with our daughter, but I have always asked her to be involved in important family decisions since she was 14. Of course, there were some decisions she couldn't participate in, but I tried to involve her in everything else. When she was 15, we needed a car. Although my mother wanted a small sports car, she agreed with me in favor of an SUV. I ended up driving anyway, driving Tony and her friends around, and Beth got her own little car for the next year. It was I who taught her to think before making a decision and to consider all sides before giving advice. This benefited her, making her a natural leader and confessor for her group of friends. You need to figure out how to maintain the house at least until I finish school. Then give it to her if it helps you financially. I'm going to state it anyway, right? The money will be there, won't it? I hastened to reassure her. Darling, there is enough money in your deposit to last the first three years. Even if your mother doesn't help, I'll have enough time to find the money to pay for your final year of school. I give you my solemn promise. We return it homey, and I left her to unpack and think. At this point, I only wanted to know two things about her mother. How soon could we get a divorce, and which asshole is she cheating on me with? In the end, it was quite simple. All the high-tech gadgets you can buy online can't compare to a good old camera trap. Well, maybe I misspoke. The camera traps I borrowed from my brother were state-of-the-art and, when activated, captured a 30-second video before taking photos. It gave you a timestamp and could be programmed to zoom in when activated. They even had audio recordings, but they were usually so far away from their subjects that they could barely pick up anything. It took a little brainstorming to figure out how to hide them, but with the help of my brother, I built two birdhouses, each hiding a camera. I hung one on a tree by the driveway that would activate whenever someone drove up, and the other on a pole pointing directly at the front door. I didn't need to see them do bad things. It wouldn't matter anyway. She said something bland about putting up birdhouses at the end of summer, and I told her it was to let them air out so the birds would think they were a natural part of the yard. Of course, I blew a lot of smoke. What the hell did I know about how a bird chooses a nest? She simply shrugged and ignored them. Here's how it worked. She worked for a company that had flexible hours, so two or three times a week she took two hours for lunch, working overtime or coming in early to get her work done. Her boyfriend must have worked there. She got home 30 minutes before him, grabbed a sandwich and shed her clothes. He showed up, they had sex for about 30 minutes, then got dressed and left. She was returning to work, and he was killing time until his return. Sometimes he would stay at my house and drink one or two of my beers. Homemade beer that a friend supplied me with. I'm surprised I didn't notice this earlier. Maybe Tony was right. Maybe I really was ignorant. Childish as hell, but when I found out, I put all but one or two of the beers in the store refrigerator. They were the old-style bottles with ceramic caps and rubber washers, about 24 ounces full. I would take the ones I left in the house, drink about a quarter of them, and cover them with fresh urine. Then I gave them a good shake and put them back. I would be grinning like crazy when I came home and found an empty bottle on the counter. I might make him sick, but did I really care? About once a week I would take the lid off the septic tank and take out the condoms, they were busy little bees, averaging twice per session. No wonder she had no enthusiasm for me. Most of the time, she was completely satisfied. It took me three weeks of careful preparation, but everything was set up and ready to go. I wouldn't let Tony be there when this happened. No one deserved to see a parent humiliated the way I intended. I thought about inviting the neighbors, but then changed my mind. Instead, I set up two video cameras and started filming them. Brian had an old boombox that used cassette tapes. I placed it next to my dresser where it was barely visible. I tried to time it so that the boombox would go off right after they stripped naked. The cassette was launched. At first, the tape was blank until it hit the sounds I had recorded. I checked the speaker and it was loud. Boom! The sound of a shotgun and the sound of breaking wood. I went to Habitat and bought an old door which I installed in the woods and shot. As soon as the shot rang out, they heard my scream. Very little of it was acting. I had a lot of pent-up rage, and I let it out. 
You lying slut! The shotgun fired again. I'm going to shoot what's digging between his legs. Then I'll push this shotgun into you and pull the trigger until it's unloaded. Here I am, bitch. I bet I've watched this scene a hundred times and I still can't stop laughing. They rushed out the front door and rushed to their cars. All he was wearing was a white shirt, trousers, jacket, and tie, which he held in his hands. Later, I found his boxers on the bedroom floor. I walked around the house and headed towards him. He screamed like a girl and jumped into his car. That's when he noticed the gift I left him. I took two 20-liter buckets, loaded each condom with about 15 liters of septic fluid and some solids, and divided the condoms equally. Just before the tape recorder inside went off, I put them in the driver's seat. Serves this idiot right for leaving his car unlocked in an unfamiliar area. That still didn't stop me from kicking his ass. Beth ran out screaming. She was wearing a white blouse that she was trying to fit into. Naked breasts bounced wildly. At the same time, she was trying to pull up her brown skirt. Apparently, I got to them before they got down to business, or he didn't bother taking them off, but she was wearing a white thong. I've never seen her in a thong. Filling condoms into her car was easy. She locked her car religiously, even at home. But I had the key. She fumbled with her keys as I walked toward her before realizing the door was unlocked. She jumped inside, opened the door, and tried to start the engine. It took about 15 seconds for it to sink into her. Her skirt was still hiked up and her white thong was no longer white. I stood there taking pictures and laughing uncontrollably. I think it dawned on her what I did. She screamed at me, struggling to get out of the car. I slammed the door, almost hitting her leg. Don't even think about getting your shit-covered ass out. Better yet, keep going. I'm still removing the cap from the septic tank. I could carry you inside and close the lid. You could probably last an hour or two, doggy style, but eventually you'll get tired and just slide under the water. Now that I know all I have to do is change the filters, it may be another 20 years before I have to pump it. By then, you'd only have a few big bones left and I doubt he'd suck them into his house. The more I think about it, the more I like it. I pulled out my set of keys to unlock the door. She put the car in gear and flew back. She took out one neighbor's mailbox and knocked over another. She flew out of our impasse with alarming speed. Hey, I shouted, knowing that she couldn't hear me. This is a 40 kilometer per hour zone. Slow down your ass. This is not a residential area. This is a micro district. Okay. I was a big fan of Bill Cosby and Richard Pryor until it was revealed what a twisted asshole Bill was in real life and what kind of drug addict Richard turned into. This line was from an old comedy album my dad had. I can't remember who exactly said this. I told Tony what I had done, leaving out a few details when she got home from school. She was shocked that her old man could do something like that, but then it impressed her. And people wonder where I got my personality from. It's simply priceless. Aren't you angry about the way I treated your mother? No. You didn't physically hurt her, and she deserved it in some way. I bet she will remember this day for a long time. Now come on, you can help me pack her things. And be careful. You've already taken revenge. So we carefully packed her clothes, cosmetics, and jewelry. When Tony found the sexy lingerie, she took a pair of scissors and cut everything in half. I think the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Mom doesn't answer her calls, she told me, leaving with the last batch. She's at Aunt Gwen's. I just talked to her. I think she owes her mom for covering for her little adventures. It's a pity that Uncle Jack found out anyway. I'll be back soon. You've got her at gunpoint right now, Dad. You might want to think about changing the locks tomorrow. Three hours passed before she returned. Mom is just desperate. She repeated over and over again that it didn't have to be this way. I think she feels serious remorse over her choice. If you can believe it, she wants to come home. I convinced her to give you a few days to calm down. Aunt Gwen followed me, asking if I thought you could get over this and take her back. I just grinned and got into my car. I was still in full painkiller mode and asked to notify her at work. Gwen was supposed to come and pick her up. By striking first... I received temporary custody. Even though I threatened to show everyone my tape, she contested the divorce, 
and convinced the judge to order counseling. I was vehemently against it, but my lawyer advised me to suck it up and play along. Eight sessions. To my surprise, I actually liked some of it. The woman we were visiting was our age, moderately attractive and well-built. I noticed that she didn't have a ring. At the very first meeting, she asked us what we hoped to get from these classes. Beth went first. I want my husband and daughter back. I want to come home and restore our marriage. I kept a calm expression on my face. Then it was my turn. I would tell you it's a waste of your time, Miss Turner, but it's not, because no matter what the outcome, you'll still get paid. Don't worry. I will do my best to remain calm. I will truly participate to the best of my ability. But I wouldn't want to stay married to Beth for anything in the world. She ruined everything and the damage is too deep. What I expect to receive from these sessions is your written opinion that this marriage is not salvageable. So let's get started, shall we? I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Chad. I think... Why are you apologizing, Miss Turner? We have to be honest here. If this is how I feel and I am happy with my decision, why should it lead to sadness? I think I caught her off guard. Well, I mean, I'm here to help you find your way, talk about your difficulties and see if we can resolve them. Miss Turner, really? I'm not lost. I don't need help finding my way. My path is clear, and I see only one chain of footprints on it. I already have my solution. As far as I understand, you are here to try to force me to accept an alternative that I find completely unattractive and impossible. I'm here to tell you that you're peeing in the wind. But hey, I pay for these sessions. I should at least get some entertainment value out of them. By all means, continue. I got to her. Chad, Mr. Jones, you know that I have to report to the judge. If you refuse to cooperate or don't participate, it could work against you. Am I refusing to cooperate? I think I'm being very proactive. I did almost all the conversations here. And, Ms. Turner, I don't respond well to threats, veiled or otherwise. This is one of the reasons I tape these sessions. I put my little voice recorder, which had been working all this time, on the table. Mr. Jones, you are not allowed to tape these sessions. Why not? You can, but I can't. As the person who pays the bills, I have the right to be assured that I am paying what I deserve. I won't let you do this. And now... I stood up, picking up my recorder. We're done, Miss Turner. Tomorrow I will officially ask for another therapist, if I can get to the judge. I'm sure this post will play an important role in his decision. I wish you a pleasant evening. I left both her and Beth with their mouths open. My lawyer convinced the judge to appoint someone else, an elderly woman who didn't care if I taped the proceedings. Everything went pretty smoothly. There were many times when Beth begged for a second chance and I said no. The only heated conversation was when she tried to convince both the consultant and me that it was just a short fling. She had gone too far, she wanted to end it, blah blah blah. I attacked her with my whole body. I'm not sure how time frames work in the renegade world. How long does a fling last, as opposed to a full-blown, ongoing affair? Is having an affair less damaging to a marriage? I know for sure that you had sex 41 times in at least six or seven weeks. 41 times. It wasn't an affair. Neither of you were going to stop before you got caught. 41 times. It took a lot of planning, a lot of coordination. It wasn't a fling, Beth. It was a carefully planned plan of action. You guys were pretty smart. This could have dragged on for years if you hadn't clogged the sewer pipe. But you were caught. Quite dramatic, I thought. I couldn't help but laugh lightly. Beth went to her sister, who wouldn't let her in until she undressed and threw her things in the trash. Even after five showers, she still smelled. Repairers cleaned up her car, but she had to replace the driver's seat. I don't know what happened to her lover, but he was locked up about a week after Beth. I never showed anyone the video I shot, but rumors started spreading. Brain heard about it and nicknamed me Condom. I think her sister spilled the beans on most of the story a few weeks later after she got a little too drunk at a local bar. The classes were pretty boring. By the fourth week, we were simply doing everything we needed to do. Beth cried, but I remained stoic. The counselor announced this at the sixth session. And four months later, Beth and I were the proud owners, at least in my case, 
of a shiny new set of divorce decree. I thought the agreement was quite reasonable. Instead of child support, Beth had to pay half the mortgage on the house and continue to contribute to Tony's college fund. There were only ten payments left, so it was pretty much a wash. As soon as Tony graduated from high school, we sold the house and split the money. We got a good price, even in a downturn. I took my half and bought a house five houses away. The area was larger, there was an extra bedroom, and there was even a swimming pool in the backyard, the only one in the area. It was a flash sale, and I bought it for about two-thirds of what it was actually worth. I only had 20000 to finance. It was like a car loan. I paid him off in four years. Tony did well in college. She started bringing her two roommates over to her house on breaks. I found them jobs for the summer, and when they had a day off, they lay by the pool. As a result, I had many visitors of college age, men and women. I became something of an urban legend. Now, even at work, most people call me condom. I was a department manager at a company that made brake parts for high-end cars, mainly Mercedes and BMW, but also Bentley and Land Rover. I earned what many shift managers at other factories earned. I was good at my job, and my bosses were happy with me. I didn't even think about dating until Tony was in her third year of college. I didn't really want this. Oh, I've had a few girlfriends with benefits over the years, but nothing serious. Then Colette went to work. She was invited to head another department. We talked, mostly about work, but once a month the managers went to the local pub to get some fresh air and relax. Three months later, I asked her out on a date, and she accepted. There was a spark there, but we took our time with it. It took almost four months before we started getting closer. I felt that if she was going to be in my life, she needed to know my story, so I told her the whole story of how I got the nickname Condom. She seemed a little surprised, then struggled to hide her smile. Soon she was laughing. Then she told me her story. She was married, like me, to someone very similar to my ex. It seemed like he didn't like typical sex, but a woman's butt. She, no. Since she didn't, he started gathering playmates who would agree. Colette told me that when she found out about this, she bought an old blender at Goodwill, put on rubber gloves, grabbed some scissors, and filled a blender full of poison oak and ivy leaves. She pured the leaves, sifting them through a sieve until she had about an ounce of juice left. She then took the hypodermic needle and carefully inserted it into the half-empty tube of lube, placing it back in its hiding place. A week later, she received a call from the hospital. They had to rush her husband there because it looked like he was having a severe allergic reaction to something. She laughed. When I got there, he was lying on his back, his robe pulled up because he was extremely sensitive to touch. I swear he was so bloated he looked like a porn star. I spoke with the doctor and he tried to determine the cause of this reaction. I looked at my husband like I was dead. Well, I said to the doctor, he has a habit of sticking this pathetic instrument up the ass of any whore he can get his hands on. Maybe it was the poison ivy juice I put in his lube. Do you think it could be like that, honey? The doctor had a very funny expression on his face, and one of the nurses dropped her tablet. Don't come home, darling, or next time I'll do something irreparable with your junk. Doc, if you have a slut here with the same symptoms in her ass, you might want to check her out. You will have a pleasant evening. When I was leaving, I heard the doctor tell the nurse to check on the woman in room 312. It was on the same floor, so I stopped by. She was lying on her stomach with her ass in the air. It was so swollen and red that I swear it looked like a space alien. She couldn't see who came in because of her position, so she asked if I could give her something stronger for the pain. I spanked her ass so hard I thought I broke my arm. She screamed, and I leaned over to make sure she could hear me. It won't take the pain away, but it will give you something else to focus on. I'm the wife of the man you had sex with. I added poison ivy juice to the lube. Next time it might be acid. Think about that, slut. The next time you decide to fuck another woman's husband. I was sweating for days, waiting to be arrested. But I think the disclosure of the secret was worse than their punishment, because I never heard a word. I just looked at her with my mouth open while she looked tense. Suddenly, I grinned. I think I love you. She smiled back. 
You know better. After a few more months, we decided yes. Tony loved her and understood when she couldn't bring her roommates the following summer. We needed bedrooms. Colette had a 16-year-old daughter and a 14-year-old son. Tony and her daughter Joy were bridesmaids, and her son Bill walked her down the aisle. Several months passed before we settled into the family apartment. When the time came, Tony showed Joy in graduating from her old campus, and two years later, Bill received a tennis scholarship. We are several years older now. The children came here for our 15th wedding anniversary. Tony is married and has two children. Joy has three children, Bill has a wife, and their adopted daughter. The grandchildren splashed in the pool. The children watched them and prepared food. We just sat there like honored guests. From where I'm sitting, I can see a small decoration on the fence. Colette was quite a talented artist, and she painted accents on our mailboxes, birdhouses, and fences. The one I was looking at was so tiny it was barely noticeable. An inflated condom with poison ivy curling around it. Reminder, she says. We never needed it. As for what happened to Beth, who cares? Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.